Hello everyone and welcome back. So we're going to be covering the following topics, inline elements, block elements, inline block elements. And this is how we normally see them in a CSS code. So let me minimize this one. And I already have here created a project to illustrate this concept. All right, so what do we have here? We need to focus our attention to this first div. And we have here an attribute class and I named it block element. You don't, we don't have to name it block element, right? It could be ABC, XYZ. I only name it block element just to illustrate the point that a div is by default a block element. So let's go ahead and preview this project and observe what is a block element. So the div that we are looking right here, this is this one, okay? We targeted this in CSS, as you can see. We set a border of two pixels, solid, blue, margin and padding, 20 pixels, and a background color of light blue. Let's make the border thicker, maybe around five pixels. And this is what we get. So based on this illustration, a block element, it will automatically consume the entire width. Another example of block element is, for example, an H1. I'm going to type here an H1 without styling, okay? So without styling. So I'll type here ABC. I'm going to save that. And this is how it would render on the page. ABC. And the next element is on the next line. And I'm going to type again, for example, H2, which is another example of a block element. I'm going to type here XYZ save that and on the page as you can see it starts with a new line it cannot consume the width here because there is no available width here already because each one is by default taking up the entire width since it is a block element this will become obvious if we are going to target that here in css and we are going to set the background color for example green and now as you can see, it is now visually obvious that this element is taking up the entire width. All right, so now we already understand basically what is a block element. It consumes the entire width by default. And I mentioned that by default because you can actually change that behavior if you are going to change that element from being a block element into an inline element. So let's proceed to the inline element. So we can now go ahead and delete H1. All right, so let's proceed with the inline element. As you can see right here, we have a span element because a span element is by default an inline element. I only added here a class to name it inline element, even though we don't, we don't have to. The only reason that we have to add this inline element class attribute is so that we can target that in CSS and add some margin and padding, add some background color and some border. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, let me just go ahead and delete this H1 first. And we are going to save this. And we have here another example of inline elements, the anchor tag. So we're going to save this and observe this on how it is being rendered on our page. So unlike block elements, the inline elements like the name implies, they are sitting next to each other. It doesn't consume the entire width automatically, right? So for example, I'm going to copy this anchor tag and place it here at the front, uh, in front of the, of the first span element. As you can see, it only contains the width that it is needed and it accommodates another inline element beside it. So they sit each other side by side. As long as there is an available width, because if we are going to, right, like right now, it is like minimized. Other elements are now forced to be on the next line, but not necessarily because it brings up to the next point that, it, it, I mean, if this one is on the next line, why is it that they are like sitting like right on top of each other? It is because another characteristic of an inline element, it doesn't respect top and bottom margin and padding. Again, top and bottom only margin and padding, not left and right. Because as you can see, if, we are, if I'm going to maximize this, it does respect this padding over here because we have it in our CSS. So for example, I'm going to remove this or comment that out or disable that code. 
And as you can see, it affects the layout. So that means it respects the margin and padding of left and right, but not top and bottom. So for example, I'm gonna say here margin top, let's say 1000 pixels. It doesn't have any effect. But if we are going to convert this element, I mean, by default, again, span is an inline element. I'm going to convert this to, let's say, display and then block. Right now, it's converted to block. And as you can see, the height, all right, of that margin, let's make that a padding so we can see that. Okay, padding top, 1,000 pixels. And as you can see, the height is now being uh, rendered, is now being respected by this element and that's for the block element so by default it is an inline element all right but we don't have to write this because by default it behaves like that an inline element and it doesn't respect margin and padding top bottom only okay but for left and right because if we are going to set uh, just margin and padding it does apply 20 pixels uh, this code right here applies margin top and bottom, left and right. Unless we specify like margin left only or margin right only or margin top or bottom only. So if we are going to set only margin, it will apply top, bottom, left and right. But for inline elements, uh, the point that I'm trying to make, it will respect left and right margin and padding, but not top and bottom. All right, so let's now go ahead and check this inline. We covered that. How about inline block? So basically, it's a combination. Let's see what happens if we are going to convert the uh, element over here. We know that the span elements over here are by default inline. We already have demonstrated that uh, if we are going to set that to block, and as you can see, it, it now respects the top and bottom margin and padding and D already consumes the entire width. And if we are going to set this to inline block, all right, which is a combination of the characteristics of block element and inline, if we are going to observe this on the page, so just like inline element, because it's inline block over here, they set each other, they don't consume the entire width. So if there's an available width over here, this inline element, will sit on that previous inline element and so on and so forth. But what is the block uh, characteristic that is being demonstrated here? Remember that the block element respects top and bottom margin and padding. And we do see it right here. You see, we have some margin over here. Uh, we do have that margin, right? So if we're going to remove this, and as you can see, it's now closer. Let's remove the margin of the block element. And as you can see, we don't have that margin and padding already. So inline block element, they sit next to each other. They don't consume the entire width and they respect top and margin bottom, margin and padding. And always remember that you can always change that behavior in CSS by using the display property set that to block or inline or inline block and before we end this video i actually have here like other uses for the display property uh, block we know that but there's like a display none if we are going to set this to none and also this one over here let's copy this and paste it save our work and let's preview that in our browser and as you can see we don't see those elements anymore we can even target the anchor tag and set the display to none and uh, it's not going to display on the page removing this property let me delete that delete this one and delete this one as well save that and it will display our elements i hope that this has been informative for you see you in the next one